Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful day and the privilege that you have given to us to come together again. Father, I thank you for your protection and guidance upon our lives. Father, I thank you for Brother William and his parents, Sister Amy, Brother Nicholas, for us to come together and have fellowship together this afternoon. Father, I pray and I commit our lives together unto your hand. Lord, be with us in the midst as we have fellowship together. And I say thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> this evening we're going to be beginning a series on something pertaining to spiritual warfare. Something that is not very often discussed and something that needs to be stressed and emphasized much more than what it truly is. We've heard about the armor of God. We've heard about the different pieces of it preached many different times, many different ways. But one thing that is not explained is the armor clad Christian. The armor clad Christian, there we go. Lord, thank you for showing me that I'm still human and still alive. <coughs> now, as I was saying, the armor clad Christian is something that is not discussed as often as it should be. We've heard about the different pieces of the armor, what they stand for, what they mean. We've heard it explained many different ways, many different fashions, by many different preachers. But one thing we have not heard is what it is to us, what it's supposed to be to us. Yes, it's the armor of God. Yes, it's what protects us from the devil. But what else does it stand for? Just looking at the scripture, I found four names for the armor of God. Four names. A soldier is never known to go into battle unprepared. He has his helmet, his vest, his rifle, his combat knife, his extra magazines of ammunition, his pistol, and so on. If a soldier forgets any of those things, he will put himself in a much more life-threatening situation than if he had all of his equipment. The same principle applies to the Christian. If he or she forgets an article of the armor, then that Christian will fall in battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. In our battle against the devil, we cannot afford to let our guard down for any reason whatsoever. For if we do, we leave spaces open in our armor. What exactly is our armor? It is not physical by any means, nor is it just a figment of our imagination. It is spiritual, and it is just as real as the clothes that we wear. First name. Our armor is an armor of light. And that is found in Romans 13, 12 through 13. Romans 
Romans 13, 12 through 13 says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Ephesians 5, 8 through 10 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. We are children of God no longer in darkness as a child of darkness. As children of God, we must put on the armor of light. We are the light of the world and have been lifted out of the fields of darkness. We cannot be hid just like a city on a hill, for we are to let our light so shine before men. The armor of light sets us apart from the darkness, signifying which side we are on, the army that we are a soldier in. Then Psalm 84, 11. In Psalm 84, 11, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Let's look at the first few words of that verse. For the Lord God is a sun. The sun shines its light upon the earth, and its radiance provides warmth. Just as the sun shines brightly, we are to let the light of God that is within us shine and bring light to a world filled with darkness. Second thing. Our armor is an armor of righteousness. And that is found in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. which says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, 
by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. If our armor is the armor of righteousness, then we will be able to approve ourselves as ministers and servants of God in the circumstances brought forth in verses 4 and 5. With the attributes described in verses 6 through 8a, humble before men and in the sight of God, thus being lifted up in his eyes for the absence of self-righteousness. Whatever circumstances are before us, we are to put God first, to seek his kingdom and his righteousness, as Matthew 6, 33 says. This armor of righteousness shows what our number one priority is and always should be. Seeking the kingdom and righteousness of God. Having the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left means that the righteousness of God is the source of our strength and the source of our protection, trusting that it is enough to deliver us and shield us. Third name. Our armor is the armor of God. That is found in Ephesians Six, ten through eleven. And the pieces are described in the verses that follow. Ephesians six, ten through eleven says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Our armor is God's armor. Our armor is God. For it is only God who can protect us from the devil and all of his devices. With the armor of God, we are strengthened and emboldened to stand in the day of adversity and not faint in any capacity. Proverbs 24.10 says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. How can we stand if we do not trust God? We cannot. A lot of Christians seem to think that once they accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, that the devil cannot touch them. 1 Corinthians 10.12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Anyone who thinks that they are able to stand by themselves without God will inevitably faint and fall. There is no question about it because they are not trusting God as their strength. They are not trusting God as their God. They are exalting themselves in that position and therefore they will be cast down. A 
again, anyone who thinks that they themselves are able to stand up against the devil and all of his devices, you've got another thing coming because the devil's got you right where he wants you. He will deceive you into thinking that you're doing something for the Lord. When in all actuality, you're doing something for a lowercase Lord. And not the one that matters most. Not the one that's the only one that matters. You go out to serve the Lord in your own strength. You're not doing it for God. You're doing it for yourself and thus doing it for the devil. There is no way around it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You can't try to justify doing something in your own power for the furthering of the ministry. If you do something in your own power, you'll do nothing more than hinder the ministry. You'll do nothing more than hinder the cause of Christ instead of help it. The cause of Christ can only be pushed, pressed forward by people who are sold out for him. And if you're doing something in your own strength, you're not sold out for him. You've got something between you and God that you need to get out of the way. The last name. And by far, the most important It is by whose name we are saved. The Lord Jesus Christ that is found in Romans chapter 13 verse 14 which says but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Jesus Christ is our light. He is light. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He is righteousness. Jesus Christ is our God. He is God. And ultimately, He should be the Lord of the lives of those who follow Him. If you are not truly sold out for Him, then He is not truly the Lord of your life. You might have asked Him to be your, come into your heart and be your Savior. But, he can be your Savior and not be your Lord. If He is your Lord, then you have absolutely surrendered to Him. And thus, are right smack dab in the middle of the will of God for your life. You accept Him as your Savior, but then you don't make Him the Lord of your life, You're in a dangerous position. And you will fall. And you will fail. Because you're not in the center of the will of God for your life. To begin to discover the will of God for your life, first and foremost, yes, you need to be saved. And secondly, surrender. Of course, following the first step of obedience being baptism. Identifying with Christ if you want to be used by Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ once
Once he's on us, we can't take him off. We might get weak. But you know what? Our armor is just as omnipotent as the Lord Jesus Christ. With having on this armor, we've been given the strength and the power to overcome because Christ has overcome. We have light because Christ is light. We have a righteousness that is not our own because that was put on us whenever we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. When we put on the Lord Jesus Christ, we do not make provision for the flesh. For he is the one we give all provision to. To sum things up, our armor sets us apart from the devil's forces. Even an unsaved individual can tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. It is by the way they live. <coughs> and if a lost person cannot tell the difference between you and an unsaved individual, there's something wrong with your life. Something you've not given over to God. Something you've not let go of. Perhaps you might not have ever been saved in the first place. That's ultimately between you and God, whether or not you're saved. But an unsaved individual will be able to tell you, I mean, to tell that you are a Christian by the way you live. Someone can read the Bible all their lives and still go to hell. Someone can go to church all their lives and still go to hell. First and foremost, to be clad in the armor of God, we must first accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And when we begin putting that armor on, we are signifying that we're making Jesus Christ the Lord of our life. Because when we put that armor on, we are pledging not only our allegiance to him, but we're also surrendering our lives to him, pledging our lives in service to him. Service to him is not just hit and miss one year after another kind of thing. It is 24-7, 365, right down to the wire, on the front line. We ourselves wouldn't be able to handle the pressure. That's why we have Christ. He goes before us. He has our back. His glory is our reward, as it says in Isaiah 58. Our armor sets us apart from the devil's forces. Our armor signifies our priorities. You put that armor on, your number one priority is being a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our armor strengthens us according to the power of God. When we put that armor on, we're signifying that we know we cannot do this on our own. That we need protection. That we need strength. That we need God. And His power. Because it's only His power that can overcome the devil and all of His devices. And lastly, our armor is our Savior. 
There is absolutely no question about it. Every piece of the armor, which we will be discussing in upcoming weeks, describes a different portion of the person and the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our most gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given us. I just pray that we'll be able to take this lesson and apply it to our hearts. That we may take these four names of your armor and apply the meaning of them to our lives, the significance of them and the importance of them to our lives. Lord, I pray that you would just give us the humility to be able to wave the white flag in your presence and surrender fully and completely to you, that we may be used by you and you alone and not make provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts and its desires. God, I just pray that you be glorified and magnified in all our lives. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.